Hey there everybody and welcome to my review of the new MG ZS EV. MG are on a bit of a roll at the minute with a revised three little hatchback and the ZS and HS SUVs. However, they've startled the motoring industry by bringing out this, the ZS EV. And I've had it for a week to see if it's any good and if it in fact can compete with the EV Elite. Styling wise, now you can be forgiven for thinking that the ZS EV looks very much like its petrol counterpart. However, there are a couple of key features that do differentiate between the two. Now firstly there's the colour of this ZS EV, it's in Palimco Blue and it is exclusive to the EV version. And as a result I have had a couple of people have asked me if it was the EV purely based on the colour. And I do really like it, it does give kind of an eco vibe to the ZS EV which I do appreciate. Secondly, we've got the alloy wheels, which are 17 inches and diamond cut. And again, I do applaud MG for going for 17 inch alloy wheels as it does show the bias towards ride and comfort rather than sporty handling. So again, well done. Next, we've got a little EV badge on the back on the bootleg, should I say, of the ZS EV. And I do again applaud MG for not just smattering the ZS EV in little EV badges. It's just one little badge that lets you know it's an electric vehicle. And then finally, we got the front of the ZS EV where we've got the grill. It is the new Galaxy grill and that's the corporate identity for MG. But please forgive the squeaking. If you do press the badge, it does unveil the charging socket for you. However, a little bit of a drawback is once you've got the uh, lid raised up, you can't actually see it. You do have to bend down in order to access it. So if you've got any kind of mobility issues and if you're bent over, it can be a little bit frustrating, but it is something you can get used to. Perhaps maybe for the facelift version of the ZS, you could have the lid actually go downwards. So therefore it makes access to the socket much easier. But that's just something to bear in mind. And as I said, it's just a minor quibble on it. But yeah, it's a very lovely looking car, the ZS EV. Again, apologies for the squeak. And I do really like it, and I love the fact it has come in this uh, metallic blue colour. But that's enough of the outside of the MG ZS EV. Let's have a little look at the interior. Sat in the ZS EV, well, of course, this being a small SUV, you've got a nice high seating position. So getting in and out of the car is really easy. So if you do suffer from any kind of mobility issues, then this is definitely one car to consider. And then once you sat in the driver's seat, you do find that on this exclusive trim, you've got plenty of adjustment in the seat itself because they are electrically operated. However, you can't quite get the perfect driving position because just like the petrol version of the ZS, the steering has rake adjustment, but not reach. So that's a little bit disappointing. Interior quality is actually a little bit better than the petrol ZS. So we've got the soft touch plastics on top of the dash. We have got hard and scratchy plastics on top of the doors, but there is a little bit of leatherette trim on the inlay. And then we've also got some leatherette here on the center console to rest your knee against if you're doing any longer journeys. So I do appreciate that. We've still got the eight inch touchscreen in the center of the dash. And now we've got Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay as standard. And that's a great addition to the range. So Android users, you can now rejoice. You have got SatNav as well built in on this exclusive version. However, it does take a little bit of time for it to load up. And personally, I just recommend going on to Waze or Google Maps as it is much more easier and uh, user friendly to use. And then we've also got your climate control buttons underneath. And I say climate control, it's actually air conditioning buttons. And there are some shortcut buttons on here, but in terms of the actual directional side of it, you do have to use the eight inch touchscreen in order to kind of precisely get where you want the air to blow. It's only a minor quibble, but I like the fact that there are some old fashioned rotary dials. And then we've got the center console, which has been actually redesigned for the ZS EV because we don't need a manual gearbox or an automatic. So what we do have is a little rotary dial like you would kind of find on something like a JLR style product. And it's very easy and intuitive to use. You've got reverse, neutral and drive and you just simply turn the dial to where you want to be. And then on top, we've got a nice big park button, which does help when you get to the end of your journey. Then just ahead of that, we have got three additional buttons. So we've got a mode button, which is your drive mode select. So we've got eco, sport and normal. We've got a curves button just alongside that. And that's your kinetic energy regeneration system button. Essentially, that just adjusts the severity of the regen braking. So you can either have it in mild, hard or wild. So click up in the top right hand corner and let me know how you like it. Mild or wild. 
I am talking about the regen brake in there, not anything else, honestly. And then next to that, we've got a battery button. And basically that means that if you're driving along and the central display is on anything other than the battery range, you can quickly press that and it will provide you with the range you've got left in the battery. So if you do suffer from any kind of range anxiety, that's a good button to, uh, to use whilst you're driving. And then just behind the gear select, we've got an electric handbrake, a first for the ZS, but it also comes with auto hold, which is a nice feature to have. And then just behind there, we've got a couple of cup holders, which have a nice cover to it. And the cup holders are actually of a decent size, but if you do have any small energy drinks or small bottles, they might rattle around a bit, so just be aware of that. And then just behind there, we've got the armrest, which is actually a good height to use and rest your arm on. And then underneath that, there is a little bit of additional space there. So that is very much appreciated. And then in front of the three buttons in front of the gear selector, there's a little bit of flat space that you could put your phone or put your key there because we have actually got a floating dash design on the ZS EV. So underneath this, we have actually got a little bit of additional space where you can put your phone and you've got a 12 volt socket and two USB charging ports. So that is very much something you wouldn't expect on a car like this, but I do love the fact that MG are actually making use of the space provided. It is a nice additional feature. And then when it comes to additional cubby spaces, well, we have got some good sized door bins, but they're not lined with any fabric. So any loose items are gonna rattle around in there. And then we've got the glove box, which is exactly the same as the ZS petrol. And is a little bit disappointed. I would like that to be a bit bigger. But overall, the actual additions or the changes they've made to the ZSEV compared to the petrol are very welcome and I do really like it. It's very simple to use and easy to use, especially when on the move. I do really like it and as well with the steering wheel, we've got a flat bottom to it and then we've got a lot of uh, steering wheel controls. And again, as well as a new feature on the ZS, we've also got the new MG Pilot system. So that gives you a lot of safety systems. It does boost the car's end cap rating. But you get things like adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, reverse cross traffic assist, as well as autonomous emergency braking, which can detect not only pedestrians, but also cyclists. So there's also automatic lights and automatic wipers. And these are all part of the MG Pilot system. And that's actually a brilliant thing to have, knowing that if you go for MG Pilot, you don't pick or choose, you just get all of those systems in one big kind of, uh, in one big go. And that's actually a great thing to have here on the MG ZS EV. And it shows that MG are also listening to customers because if they're listening to customers who want those extra safety systems, we now know that MG can provide them for you. So yeah, I'm very pleased with the uh, front cabin of the MG ZS EV. Now let's have a little sit in the back. Sat in the back of the ZS EV, it does feel very much the same as the petrol version of the ZS, apart from one new feature, and that's the panoramic glass sunroof. It is a welcome addition and does allow a lot of extra lighting. And as you can see, it's not actually compromised headroom too much, but then again, I am only five foot seven tall and five foot seven wide. If you are over six foot, you might need to kind of slide your body over a little bit just to take advantage of that additional headroom. But apart from that, everything else is very much the same as the petrol version of the ZS. Interior quality is exactly the same. We've got hard scratchy plastics on top of the doors. We've got nice big windows that do open all the way down. Uh, in terms of cubby spaces, well, we have got a couple of good sized door pockets and a couple of aeroplane style pocket seats behind the uh, front seats. We've also got a little bit of an extra cubby space here, which you could put a phone in, but it's not the most useful but i have actually realized if you put a phone in there upside down and you can actually use the usb charging port that's there so that is a nice addition to it and then when it comes to isofix supports we've got them on the outer seats and there's no covers for them just a bit of exposed metal so it does make it easy when affixing a child seat so yeah just like the standard petrol version of the zs it's a nice surprisingly comfortable place to be and yeah i can definitely see myself doing a long journey in the back of the zs ev so that's enough of the back seats let's now have a look at the boot of the zs ev now the big surprise when you come to the boot of the zs ev is that it's actually exactly the same as its petrol counterpart and that is at 448 liters which is class leading in the compact suv segment much more than the likes of the say arona and dacia duster 
and when you've got the variable boot floor in its highest setting and you put the rear seats down although you don't get a completely flat load space it is very usable and useful if you need to load any large heavy items one thing that's a little bit disappointing however is that you don't get any through loading for any longer items into the cabin however for a car of this price we can forgive it now you can get the boot floor all the way down to its lowest setting to make use of that 448 litres. However, on this particular car, we have got two lots of charging cables and we've got the Type 2 cable and also a three pin socket cable. Now these are optional extras and personally, if you can just try and get yourself a uh, home charger installed. This is definitely a Type 2 because that way it'll take around about seven hours to charge up the ZS EV. But again, I am very much impressed with the boot capacity of the ZS EV. Now granted there are still no tethering hooks or 12 volt socket, but again I think we can forgive a car in this price bracket, especially against its rivals. But yeah, I'm very much impressed with it and I think it's now time that we take this EV SUV out for a drive. So as you set off in the ZS EV, first impressions are really good. Of course, with this being an electric vehicle, it is eerily quiet in here. The only noise you really get when you set off is that weird electric whirring noise. That sounds very futuristic and lets you know you're in an EV. And then the next thing you find as you get a little bit faster is that there's a little bit of road noise coming into the cabin. And then if you get an even faster still, you get a little bit of wind noise coming off the wing mirrors. Visibility is just the same as you would get in the petrol version of the ZS. So the A pillars are actually not too bad. You don't find yourself looking around them at junctions. And if you look over your shoulder, yes, you've got quite a pronounced C pillar, but you have got those tiny little windows in there which don't really help too much. But now, thanks to MG Pilot, you have got blind spot detection and that will definitely help you, especially if you're doing any long journeys. But first impressions are actually really good. It's very comfortable as well in terms of the suspension setup. So yeah, first impressions very good on the ZS EV. It is a nice car to be in. So under the bonnet of the ZS EV, or should I say under the floor, is a 44 kilowatt per hour battery producing around 143 brake horsepower and more impressively, 353 newton meters of torque which means that this compact suv will get from 0 to 62 in around eight and a half seconds and although that doesn't sound overly impressive it actually feels a hell of a lot quicker than what those figures suggest because this is being an ev as soon as you put your right foot down the torque and the response is instant and because there's only one gear it just keeps on pulling and if you put the ZS EV into sport mode and you need to do an overtake, firstly, it will put a smile on your face just how quickly it starts accelerating. And secondly, you'll actually surprise other road users with just how nippy the ZS EV is. It's absolutely brilliant for overtaking when you've got it in sport mode and it just responds instantly. And yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. In terms of everyday driving, it's the perfect amount of power, it's the perfect amount of performance, and you're not going to be overwhelmed or scared, like a kind of Tesla Model S P100D in terms of the outright performance. This is definitely a usable EV vehicle for every day, and MG have made sure of that. So what's the ride and handling like in the ZS EV? Well, if you've seen my review of the petrol version of the ZS, and I'll put a link up at the end of the video, you'll see that I was incredibly surprised with how well the ZS rode. It just dealt with the bumps and imperfections really well for a car that started out at a price of £12,500. And I have to say, when it comes to the EV version, I am just as impressed and even more surprised. If anything, this rides better than the petrol version of the ZS. And I think that's just because you've got that additional weight under the floor, you've got that lower center of gravity. So it just deals with the bumps and imperfections just a bit better than its petrol counterpart. However, it doesn't mean it's incredibly perfect. Of course, with this being an EV car, any bumps and imperfections, any manhole covers or potholes you go through, those bumps and imperfections are really gonna resonate into the cabin and they can disrupt the uh, refinement somewhat but it's kind of the price you pay for getting in for a budget SUV or a budget EV SUV. But for the most part, in terms of everyday driving, it's absolutely fine. You've got to really go over some bad undulations and potholes in the road to expose those weaknesses. 
and again I'm really thankful for MG for putting those 17 inch alloy wheels on the car so therefore having the priority being for right drive comfort rather than sportiness and sporty handling and when it comes to the handling of the ZS EV again I am pleasantly surprised I have found actually the steering has got a bit of a weird feel to it and you do uh, notice this at the beginning that if you're driving at low speed you find that the steering wheel and the steering feel is just really light i mean you can park the zs in a tight space in a parking space and maneuver it just using your little finger that's how light the steering is and then if you go past say 10 miles an hour it really does get a lot of additional weight put into it so you get that steering feel at higher speeds it is something just to kind of mentally prepare yourself for because it can catch you off guard um, because you're thinking at, uh, at low speed you're really strong because you can just maneuver the uh, ZS with ease and just using your little finger and then all of a sudden you can feel as weak as a kitten because when you get past that 10 miles an hour if you're still using your little pinky all of a sudden you feel all that extra weight just coming in and extra resistance so that's just something to be aware of but at higher speeds it actually drives really well yes it's not got the hugest amount of steering feel going through the cabin but you know what for everyday living it's absolutely fine you're not feeling like you're in a, a video game or anything it's not completely devoid of feel but it is still it is still nice for everyday living now something i do have to mention about the zs ev that i really do like is that it remembers your driver settings so for my time in the ZS EV, I've been driving predominantly in eco mode. So every time I get into the car, the driver mode is in eco mode. I don't have to reset it. And then the regen button for the regenerative braking, I've been driving that in its most wild setting. And every time I get into the car, it's already set to it. I don't have to reset it every time I get into the ZS EV. And these are little things that I really do appreciate about the car. There's so many cars out there where every time you get into it and start the engine up, you have to redo your driver settings and that can become a little bit irritating over time. And then there are just some little extra bits that I really do find really useful. So for example, as I mentioned, there is the big park button on top of the gear select. Now that's not for the electric handbrake, that's just the park gear when you have an automatic style gearbox. But when you get to the end of your journey and you press the park button, it automatically engages the electric handbrake. So that's something I also really like as well. These are just brilliant little shortcuts to help make your journey just a bit smoother and a bit less tedious, you know, not having to reset certain things whilst you're driving or every time you get into the car. The other thing I have found as well, and this could be a safety point, I think with the ZS EV, is that you have got the also hold button, which is part of the electric handbrake. But if you're just getting into the car and you get everything all turned on and then you do your seatbelt, you do find that the also hold doesn't turn on or become active until you got your seatbelt plugged in. So if you are a kind of person who likes to drive illegally without your seatbelt on, and then you come up to a junction that's on an incline, you might find your ZS EV rolling backwards into the car behind you because that um, auto hold has not engaged. So just be aware of that. So always wear your seatbelt. But it's little things like that that I really do appreciate on the ZS EV. They've thought of things that larger or even more premium manufacturers should really have thought of beforehand, but they haven't. And I do, again, take my hat off to MG for actually doing that in the ZS EV. It's just something I do appreciate from them. One thing I do like as well is that because this is an electric vehicle, you don't get a traditional rev counter, you get a little power gauge in terms of percentage of power you're using at that exact moment. And you get a little box there for the charge, so when the regen braking is active, it shows it charging. You get a little efficiency box, which is between zero and 30%, and that will definitely come in handy when you're doing a lot of town driving. And then above that, you're outside the efficiency box, and uh, you're probably gonna use a bit more battery power under a hard acceleration, or if you've got the car in sport mode, for example. And then there is between 90 and 100% 
of the percentage you've got a little boost gauge and that's just telling you you're using all the power that's at your disposal right there and then to do like an overtake for example it's just a nice little feature and i really do like it and it's nice and easy to read especially when on the move so i do again appreciate that mg have taken that into consideration now when it comes to niggles in the mg zs i've only really come across two so firstly we got the sun visor with a vanity mirror but there's no vanity light but that's a very minor niggle the second one is actually same as what we had on the zs petrol car which is we have got reverse parking sensors and a reversing camera in terms of the picture quality it's not too bad on this type of vehicle but with the reversing sensors it seems to give you some sort of distance reader and lets you know in centimeters how far you are away from the obstacle behind you however it does vary wildly depending on how close you get to it i was reversing next to uh, a car and uh, it was telling me that the car was 47 centimeters away and as i was getting closer to it it ended up being 74 centimeters away so don't take it as gospel from those readings. Take the uh, use of the camera as, um, as being a visual aid for you and also, of course, using your judgment. But those are really the only real niggles I've had in the ZS EV. I mean, for an electric car, for a first electric car from MG, they've come out with an absolute blinder and fair credit to them. I think it's actually really good to have that in terms of minor niggles oh and i will mention the final one just being if they can get a 12 volt socket and some tethering hooks into the boot area so hopefully on the facelift version we might see that happen so what are my thoughts on the mg zs ev well the truth of the matter is mg have really pulled this one out of the bag this is a huge surprise to the electric vehicle market and in a good way as well because the ZS EV is incredibly affordable and that's just a huge plus in a lot of people wanting to get themselves into an electric vehicle. At the time of recording, there is still a deal on with MG where you can get yourself into a ZS EV from just under £22,000 and that is with a government grant as well as a discount from MG themselves. They've really price this brilliantly and not only do you get yourself into an electric vehicle you get yourself into a good electric vehicle as well and a very practical one at that cars in this price bracket if you want brand new you are looking at cars like the Renault Zoe which there is a new version coming out and is more expensive you're looking at cars like the Volkswagen e up which starts in the mid 20,000s and although there is a brand spanking new version of that car coming out, it's still going to be probably more expensive than this. I'm genuinely gobsmacked with how MG have managed to do it. And yes, build quality and everything aside, yes, it's not as premium as some of its rivals. But you know what? I can forgive M you know, the MG ZS for that because essentially this did start out as a £12,500 compact SUV and look what they've made of it and as a result as I said you can get yourself into one of these for just under £22,000 for the exclusive I think you're looking at £25,000 with the deposit uh, contribution and the grant from MG I say deposit contribution I meant discount so it's really an affordable electric vehicle to get yourself in and in terms of realistic range and drivability there's no real compromises. What I would just recommend is if you can get yourself a Type 2 charger for home, you can then plug in your ZS EV and it will charge up in around seven hours. So that's not too bad. So when you get home at the end of the day, you can charge it whilst you're sleeping. If you use the three pin plug and it is an optional extra, it takes 20 hours. I would just say, don't bother, don't go for that option. Just get a type 2 home charger fitted at home that's the best way to do it you can also use a rapid charger as well so you can go from 20 to 80 percent in around 40 minutes so again that's a huge plus to the zs ev because if you do a long journey <clears throat> you're not gonna have to wait hours to charge up the car you can just plug it in go for a wee and a cup of tea have something to eat and then boom 
you're out of the car and you're back on your journey. I'm really impressed with this car and I think as an electric vehicle, MG have really hit the nail on the head with it because they've sold over two and a half thousand of these in around about a month time frame because of that offer that's available to them. Yeah, I'm really impressed with it, MG. Well done. And I can't wait to see the next generation of electric vehicle from MG, hopefully with the HS, their uh, flagship car. And if you want to watch my review of that launch, click up in the top right-hand corner. But yeah, I'm very impressed with the MG ZS EV. And if you want to get yourself into an electric vehicle and not have to pay a huge premium like you do with other manufacturers, this is the car to go for. Hey everybody, so I hope you've enjoyed my review of the MG ZS EV. I do apologise, the light is now starting to disappear on me as the sun goes below the horizon. As always, please hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notifications icon to let you know when I bring out a new video. If you've got any questions on the MG ZS EV and my time with it, please put them down in the comments section below. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I always advise you follow me on there for additional content, including still images and live videos, including kind of backgrounds of me driving these review cars and any adventures I go on. And again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and please, yes, have yourselves a wonderful day. Put any comments down below, and I will catch you all in the next video. Take care and bye-bye. I'm hoping you saw that. I know it's, it's starting to get very dark now. Ugh, bloody winter.